Hello, welcome back to the next video in our series. I'm still working on the nitrogen triiodide, so stay tuned for that because it's taking quite a bit longer than I expected, but for now we'll be doing a different chemical reaction. If you've been wondering why I've been gone for the past five months, it's because, well, I've been lazy, but also it's because I've been setting up this new lab, which is really nice and I have a lot more space and a lot more countertop area to actually work on, so hopefully that'll improve the quality of these videos. Anyway, let's get into the video. Today we're synthesizing copper 2 oxide from copper 2 chloride and sodium hydroxide, then converting it back into copper 2 chloride. Our materials today are copper 2 chloride, sodium hydroxide, hydrochloric acid, distilled water, beakers, a watch glass, a vacuum filtration setup, a stir rod, a heat source, scale, and safety gear. As always, I want to warn you, do be careful when doing chemistry, it can be very dangerous with these chemicals. We'll first start out with measuring approximately 4 grams of sodium hydroxide. So this doesn't need to be perfect, this isn't an exact reaction, but we do want to try to take close to about 4 grams. And when we combine this with water, we will combine it with about 50 mils of distilled water, and that'll create a 2 molar solution. So we're just going to start pouring in and ignore my terrible pouring skills. Uh, I will get better with that eventually, hopefully, but we'll try to get to about 4 grams. And I'd say that 4 point something grams is good enough for this. So we'll take it off and then start adding the distilled water. Now you want to add distilled water to avoid impurities. Not that it really matters for this specific reaction, but it's always nice to say pure if you can and distilled water is cheap. Certainly a lot cheaper than other types like deionized or sterile water, which is really expensive. So we'll add in about 50 mils, like I said earlier. And again, doesn't need to be perfect, just about. I got pretty close, I'd have to say. <laughs> but then we'll mix in the sodium hydroxide. So we'll pour it in slowly because this is an exothermic reaction. With these small amounts, it isn't much of an issue. But as you go bigger, if you decide to do a bigger version of this reaction, it will be an issue. So we'll just start stirring it until it is all dissolved. After it is all dissolved, we can move on to the copper chloride. So moving on to the copper chloride. We'll add approximately 3 grams of copper chloride to this solution, so make sure to zero your scale, and then start adding in to about 3 grams. Again, doesn't need to be perfect, but I want to kind of keep it at 3 grams or below just to save my copper chloride, because although I have a lot, I like to use a lot of it, so I'll try to keep this close as to 3 as possible. So we'll just start adding it in till it's about 3. After we finish adding all of our copper chloride to this, we will then move on to adding it to the sodium hydroxide solution to create our copper hydroxide, which will be a very pretty blue color. Now we'll react the roughly 3 grams of copper to chloride with the sodium hydroxide solution. The balanced chemical equation for this is copper to chloride plus sodium hydroxide is copper hydroxide and sodium chloride. So this is a double replacement reaction, which results in the formation of copper 2 hydroxide, our blue precipitate, and sodium chloride, which will dissolve in the water. And since copper 2 hydroxide is insoluble in water, it will precipitate out, and then you'll be able to filter it. So will you be using a vacuum filter for this? We'll stir the solution around to make sure that all the copper 2 chloride reacts, and also it creates a really pretty blue solution. So this is the color of the copper hydroxide, which as you can see is very beautiful. So now that we're done stirring it for a bit, we'll move on to the filtration. Now that we have our copper 2 hydroxide, we'll start to filter it out. So the reason why this works is because like I said before, the copper hydroxide is not soluble in water while the sodium chloride that it's produced is. So we just have to filter the precipitate out. So the way a vacuum filter works is it basically pulls a vacuum on the bottom part of it, which then forces air down. Uh, to try to equalize the pressure, which in turn uh, causes it to pull. Now we are left with a tiny bit of copper hydroxide left in the beaker, so we'll just scrape that into the funnel. I'm not going to bother getting all of it just because that would take a long time, and I don't really care that much because we are only doing this as a proof of concept. And in chemistry, a lot of times you work in small amounts just to prove that you can do something, not really to mass produce things. That's more of the job of the chemical engineer. So we'll just pull the vacuum, and as you can see, the liquid is coming down very quickly. And if you look carefully, you'll notice that that liquid is a slight blue color. The, this is from tiny amounts of sodium hydroxide getting through, dissolving in the water, 
and whatnot. So that's what's going on there. But the vast majority of it will not dissolve in the water or go through, so we'll be left with it on the filter paper. We'll leave this go for a while to properly dry the sodium hydroxide, so then we can put it on a hot plate, heat it up to turn it into the copper oxide. So now that the copper hydroxide has mostly dried under the vacuum filter, we will now move it to a watch glass. Now this heating will cause it to turn into copper oxide, which is black. Now, as you can see, some of it's already turned into copper oxide just because of decomposition, and also it's a very deep blue just because of how much blue is in there, but we'll scrape off what's there and put it onto the watch glass on the hot plate. The heating on the hot plate will cause it to decompose into the copper oxide, which then in turn we can combine with hydrochloric acid to turn into copper to chloride yet again. So this shows the principle of conservation of matter. The copper was not lost, it simply changed form from copper chloride to copper hydroxide to copper oxide, and eventually we'll turn it back into copper chloride. So it really shows how all of this is connected. The equations for this decomposition reaction is copper hydroxide becomes copper oxide and H2O. So we're going to boil off that H2O with a hot plate and we'll be left with just dry copper oxide. And that is the color black that you see. Now, I do want to take this time to thank you for getting this far in the video and watching this. Hopefully, if you're a teacher, this will create a cool experiment for your class. If you're doing it at home, hopefully it'll just be a fun little experiment for you to do to prove that you can make copper chloride from copper chloride and confuse all your friends by saying that. So, hope you've enjoyed the video so far. Anyway, let's get back to the chemistry and convert the copper oxide finally into copper chloride. Now that we formed the copper oxide and let it cool now and dry, we will now combine it with hydrochloric acid to form back into copper chloride. So the reaction for this is copper oxide plus hydrochloric acid becomes copper chloride and H2O again, because in chemistry just everything creates water pretty much. It's a bit crazy. So we'll add a tiny bit of our copper oxide into that little evaporation ditch and then we'll start to add in the hydrochloric acid. Now you want to add this in slowly just because it will get warm, so we'll add in a small amount to react with the copper oxide. So just be careful when doing this and only add a small amount at a time. But as you can see by that yellowish green color, that is our copper chloride that we're producing. So you can really see that brilliant green color and that's copper chloride, as we saw at the beginning of the video. Now, I could separate the copper chloride out of solution, but it is a bit of annoyance since it involves boiling off the hydrochloric acid and then waiting for the copper chloride to rehydrate, or just waiting overnight for it to evaporate. But I will get out a piece of glass that I did last time for my uh, last test of this experiment, and you can see the copper chloride color in it. And that is pure copper chloride, as you can see. So it's that same color that we started with. So as you can see, this whole reaction is just one big circle. Uh, there are some reactions that are actually doing this automatically as a circle, like they'll just keep reacting like this, but this reaction isn't one of those. It, you have to do it manually, but you could theoretically just keep doing this forever, uh, assuming that you don't have any losses, which would be next to impossible, but you know, you could if you wanted to. So we successfully synthesized copper chloride from copper chloride observing color changes, and performing several chemical reactions based on the stoichiometry. As always, remember the importance of safety when conducting these experiments, work in a well-ventilated area, and always wear proper safety gear. Thank you for joining me today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more chemistry experiments. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, hopefully the next video will be out sooner <laughs> than uh, five months, but I will try my best to get at least a couple more videos out this summer before I go off to college. Uh, after college, I don't know how often I'll be releasing videos. I'll try to do it as much as possible, but I'll be in the dorm, so I'll only be able to work on this during the weekends. So we'll see what happens, and I'll keep you updated. Uh, but as always, hope you enjoyed the video, and see you next time.